Human beings are limited in many ways and there comes a time in everyone's life when nothing but a miracle is required desperately. It is at that time when human abilities such as wisdom, technology and even money have failed to deliver a phenomenon of survival instincts. Therefore, we come across many such stories and happenings which have occurred in real life and with real people. Perhaps these stories inspire many filmmakers to create movies, documentaries, etc. For instance, an English Oscar winning director, Daniel Francis Boyle's movie 127 Hours is based on a true event and a character named Aaron Ralston, who was canyoneering in the Blue John Canyon in Utah Desert, where he was trapped for five days in the year 2003. The film showcases his experience about how he was forced to amputate his own right arm with a dull multi-tool in order to free himself. While Aaron Ralston himself wrote an autobiography about this incident entitled to be Between a Rock and a Hard Place. However, today we are here to discuss a similar survival story about a lady named Juliana Kopka. She became famous at the age of 17. She was the sole survivor of the 1971 Lanza Flight 508 plane crash, who fell from 10,000 feet while strapped to her seat and suffering numerous injuries. Juliana was born in Lima, Peru on 10th of October 1954, daughter to German geologist Hans Wilhelm Kopka and Maria Kopka. Her parents were working at the Lima Museum of Natural History when she was born. At the age of 14, she left Lima with her parents to establish the Pangona Research Station in the Amazon rainforest. Juliana was homeschooled by her parents as she spent most of her time with them, roaming in the Amazon rainforest and learning survival skills. At the time of her graduation, the educational authorities disapproved and she was required to return to the Dutch school of Lima Alexander von Humboldt to take her exams, graduating on 23rd of December 1971. The incident occurred when Juliana and her mother boarded the Lanza Flight 508 right after the day of her graduation to visit her father at the Pangwana Research Station for Christmas holidays on 24th of December 1971. However, her mother wanted to return to Pangwana with her on 19th or 20th of December 1971. Juliana's desire to attend her graduation ceremony halted her mother's plans to reschedule their travel together on Flight 508. Lanza Flight 508 took off from Lima, Peru to Equitos, Loreto with a one-stop landing at Pucallpa, Ucayali. But the flight did not make it to the Pucallpa. The plane was struck by lightning in mid-air right above the Amazon rainforest and started disintegrating before crashing to the ground. Interestingly, Lanza has also previous records of worst flight experiences. It was a private Peruvian airline that flew in the middle of the years of 1963 and 1971, operating mostly domestic connections and one destination in the United States. However, the carrier is notably remembered for the three fatal crashes, two of which occurred in between 1970 and 1971, shutting down the entire airline company. Well, initially everything was going all okay during the mid-flight, as everyone was excited to meet their families and loved ones during the holiday season. But all of a sudden, the plane entered into a hemisphere of heavy dark clouds, and 10 minutes later, it was obvious that something was very wrong. There was heavy turbulence and the plane was shaking. Followed with that, they saw a very bright light on the outer engine to the left. Juliana's mother said very calmly, this is the end, 
it's all over those were the last words she ever heard from her right after that the plane jumped down and went into a loose dive it was pitch black and people were screaming then the deep roaring of the engines filled her head completely suddenly the noise stopped and juliana was outside the plane it was a free fall strapped to her seat bench and hanging head over heels the whispering of the wind was the only noise she could hear juliana could see the canopy of the jungle spinning towards her then she lost her consciousness and could remember nothing of the impact The next day she woke up to realize that she survived the crash left alone in the amazon to withstand the poisonous and dangerous animals mongering around the biosphere she had broken her collarbone and had some deep cuts on her legs however her injuries went serious she realized later that she had ruptured a ligament in her knee but she could walk Being lost in a jungle is a terrifying prospect. There are several things that you can do to make your chances of survival easier. She found a small creek and walked in the water because she knew it was safer as most of the creeks can lead her to a village, lake or an ocean. As in the Amazon, it mostly rains. So, Juliana kept herself hydrated with the help of leftover rain droplets on leaves and on tree barks. While for the first few days to avoid starvation, she collected a bag of candies that she found at the crash site. On the fourth day, she heard the noise of a king vulture, which she recognized from the time at her parents' reserve. Usually, king vultures only land on the ground when there is a lot of carrion, and Juliana knew it was the dead bodies from the crash. When she turned around a corner in the creek, she found a bench with three passengers, rammed head first into the earth. In search of her mother, Juliana touched the corpse with a stick. She noticed that the woman's toenails are painted. She knew it was not her as her mother never polished her nails. Despite all the odds, she continued to move on with the hope of her rescue. Weak and tired, Juliana on the 10th day couldn't stand properly and drifted along the edge of a larger river she had found. It was at that time she noticed a large boat and went to touch it and realized it was for real. It was like an adrenaline shot for her. But then she saw there was a small path into the jungle where a hut was built with a palm leaf roof, an outboard motor and a liter of gasoline. She had a wound on her upper right arm about a centimeter long. It was infested with maggots. She remembered her dog had the same infection and how her father had put kerosene on it. So, she sucked the gasoline out and applied it into the wound. The pain was intense as the maggots tried to get farther deep into the wound. She pulled out around 30 maggots. After that, she decided to spend the night there. Following the next day, she heard voices of few Peruvian natives who assumed her to be the water goddess from a local folklore. A figure legend of a hybrid between water dolphin and a blonde, white-skinned woman. However, she was fluent in speaking Spanish. She could explain what exactly happened. They treated her wounds, gave her some food to eat, and later, on the next day, they took her back to civilization. During the treatment and recovery session in a hospital, she was found by her father with utmost relief. 
Following in the story for the next few days, her father, Hans Wilhelm Kopka, frantically searched for her mother and his wife. On the other hand, the news of discovering her mother's body was declared on 12th of January 1972. Another pessimistic fact is that her mother also survived the crash, but was badly injured due to which she got stagnant and died after several days, which was very dreadful. Interestingly, Werner Herzog, renowned director and a pioneer of new German cinema, was also likely to board the flight 508 on 24th of December 1971. Due to some issues, he had cancelled his plan and was saved from his final destination. Subsequently, he was informed about it and got inspired to film a documentary called Wings of Hope in 1998 about the sole survivor of Lance Flight 508. Presently, Juliana Kopka is alive and healthy. She returned to her parents' native Germany where she was fully recovered from her injuries. Like her parents, she studied biology at the University of Kiel and graduated in 1980. She received a doctorate from Ludwig Maximilian University of Munich and returned to Peru to conduct research in mammalogy specializing in bats. She published her thesis, Ecological Study of a Bat Colony in the Tropical Rainforest of Peru in 1987. In 2000, following the death of her father, she took over as the director of Panguana. She currently serves as a librarian at the Bavarian State Collection of Julozi in Munich. <laughs>